Hello, so um, in this video we're going to look at loops and so um, I've got nearly a clean uh, program to start with. There's a couple of integers. Integers are good for um, loops, although we don't have to use them absolutely. What we're going to start with is a for loop. So a for loop has uh, three bits to it or at least the setup of a for loop has three bits to it. And so we're going to start off with n1 equals zero. That's setting initial conditions. This is a test to see if we run through the loop or not. Let's see, the test can be is n1 less than 10. And then at the end, we're going to have n1 plus plus. We're going to increase the value of n1 by one each time. And what we'll do to see the, the loop running is printf uh, n1 is equal to empty backslash n. So that should print out the values of n as we go through the loop. Okay, so let's try that. Uh, click on uh, play. And so it goes from zero to nine. So we start with zero, that's less than 10. We go into the loop. Notice there's no semicolon here. And uh, we go through the loop and each time we print out N1, we get to the end of the loop and then we do this thing at the end, which is to add one to N1. Then we go back into the loop. Uh, we check first, sorry, first we check again, once we've added one that N1 is less than 10. Now, at some point when we get to the end, we get to a situation where n1 is 9, and then we get to the end of the loop, we increase it to a value of 10, and then this condition doesn't work. And so then it stops, and the program stops, which is why the last number to be printed is 9. Now, we can do some other things. We can set a value for n2. Let's set this equal to uh, 32. We can also say here that we're going to say n2 minus equals um, uh, 2. And so what we could do is printf. I'm going to use a backslash t, which is a tab. And so now we're going to print out the value of n1, 2. So now we're initializing two values, uh, one for n1 and one for n2. We're still just doing one test here. And then when we're updating, we're changing two things. We're increasing n1 by 1. We're reducing n2, oops, 2 by 2. So let's see if that works. Okay, so now as M1 is increasing, N2 increasing by two each time. Uh, one final thing to, to complicate things by is we could say, let's run this if N1 is uh, less than 10 and uh, uh, N2 is uh, greater than 20. So now there are two conditions which have to be true. So let's see how that works. Okay, so now it's stopping earlier because N2 um, gets to, uh, after we've got, got run through the loop these uh, six times, you get N1 equals five, then um, uh, N2 uh, then drops down to 20, and this condition doesn't work anymore. It's 20, it's not greater than 20, so we leave. So we could change that to an OR. We change that to OR, then either one of them is true to continue. So if we run that, now we're getting again. So this one stop. this first, this one for N2 stops being true here, but N1 is still uh, less than and here, and um, if we change this and here, then 
we'll go further. Maybe make it even two. Okay, so uh, that's how a, a for loop uh, works. Um, um, just that's got quite complicated with the extra things I've added. I'm going to go back to uh, the simple uh, for loop we started with. And um, take out that bit as well. Let's run this. Check it's going to work. Okay, so again, we've got zero to nine. So, what I wanted to do was illustrate some other ways that you could do this with other loops because a for loop is not the only loop. Uh, you also have a while loop. Let me say while n1 plus from n. We can print f with us here. Print that. And then at the end of the loop, we can increase n1 by 1. So now we're going to run through. Actually, I'm going to change this number to 12 here. And run that. And now it's going from 0 up to 11. We could change it back to 10. And it goes from 0. So we've got exactly the same re result, but now we have a while loop. And so at the beginning of the while loop, we check to see if this condition is true. And if it is, then we go through the loop. And inside the loop, we're increasing uh, n1 by 1 each time. If we move this and put it here, then uh, now it's adding 1 to n1 before you run print out the number. So now we see n1 is going from 1 to 10 instead of from 0 to 9. Um, uh, we'll just put that back there for a moment. Now I want to show you one more type of loop. I'm going to leave that loop there. So the last thing is that uh, we're going to have a do while loop. Oops. Leave that there. There's do. And now we need a semicolon at the end to finish that state. Previously, the other ones we just had uh, a curly brackets with all the express all the things to run in the loop. This is the only one. So now we can do the same thing here. So this is now running twice, zero to nine from this while loop. And the way this works is here, we set it back to zero. We've down the loop, we've printed it out, we've increased by one, and we said while n1 is equal to 10. And I'll just change that to do loop, so you can see which loop is which. Okay, so that's the first loop, that's the do loop. Um, now, one final thing I want to do is change n1 to 100. You see what happens? Then this while loop doesn't run at all because n1 is not less than 100. However, the do loop always goes through at least one time and then checks this expression and if it's true, it continues. Okay, so that's a quick look at for loops, while loops, and do while loops.